I'm currently out on a small journey to hopefully locate and identify my latest Google Maps find. The item I'm showing you on the screen right now is what I found. It appears to be some type of structure and it's along the road. It's an old access road and there's some type of small pond and maybe some other items on the property. Now it is an area that I'm not familiar with. I've never been out there before and I don't know what to expect. I don't know if it's posted. Don't even know if it's still there. Since I wasn't certain if there is vehicle access, I am utilizing one of my e-bikes today to get there, hopefully in an efficient manner, and be able to locate it and identify it. And if we're lucky, we'll find some more stuff along the way. So if you're curious as to what this latest Google Maps find is, all you need to do is come along with me. Well, this is exactly why I brought my e-bike, because there's a gate. No vehicle access. It's definitely a dumping ground. A lot of tires and trash dumped back here. Probably why the gate was put in. So what do you wager? Do you think the item's still going to be there? And if so, do you think we're going to have access to it? Honestly, it's a 50-50 gamble. I'm hopeful that's there and we can get to it, but I'm expecting to be disappointed. So feel free to pause the video, comment down below, tell me what you think, and we'll see if we're right. I'm not entirely sure where I am. I know I'm along the power line trail here, but the access road I need is somewhere off of here. I know there's a trail splitting off here, I could see. I'm gonna to have to reference back on maps to see my location and to see if I passed it or if I have to keep going. All right, looks like I got a ways to go. Uh, I believe probably a half mile to a mile. I'm glad I'm not walking, I'll tell you that. So as long as the trail's like this, I should have no problem getting there. I do think, I'm not positive, but I do think once I do reach the access road, we start climbing in elevation. So we'll see if that is the case. bridge it is pretty remote out here I can tell you that aside for some ATV tracks on the dirt and some wildlife there's no signs of anyone out here it's pretty pretty remote pretty quiet all right it shows according to maps just beyond where I could see which curves around and then goes towards the left Around there, there should be that access road. And the road goes in both directions. I need to hang a right once I do find it. And every so often I'm coming across side trails like this. No clue where they go. Don't know if they connect to where we're going, if maybe it's a loop, or it goes to a whole nother area. Someday I may have to explore some of these and see if there's anything hiding in plain sight along the way. 
Okay, I hit my first obstacle that I have no way to go around. I honestly don't want to go through that. It looks really soft, muddy, and just nasty. There's honestly no other way around it, too. And it's full of aquatic life. <laughs> I'm going to try to go right along the edge here, which is going to pull me right into the brush, which I don't like because it's going to be full of ticks probably. Which I'll be checking myself regardless, but there's a higher chance of getting one going through stuff like that. I'm just going to have to skirt around the edge of it. I don't know, even know how deep that is either. So normally I'd probably get you a B-roll shot of me traversing this, but I don't want to go across it more than once. So I'm just going to get across and if anything does happen, mishap wise, I'll let you know. I cannot escape the water hazards today, geez. Another dilemma, go through the water or go up this really steep hill, which I don't think the bike will make. Same thing, I have to go along the edge of the water. Uh, guess we'll go this way. Tons of frogs and tadpoles in these little pools of water. It hasn't rained in a few days. What's with all these puddles? Jeez. Slowing down my progress. Uh, good news is I think I'm almost at the access road. I think I see it up ahead. Just to show you too, if I wasn't taking this power line trail, the landscape would be like this. A pretty dense and dark jungle. There's no way I'd be able to go through there on a bike. I'd have to go on foot. And the distance we're covering, it would be an all day trek. So just to show you, that's what's off of both sides of this power line trail. But right up there is where we're connecting with the access road and hanging a right. After a much longer than anticipated trek on the power line trail, I came to the fork in the road. This is the access road, which I thought was gonna be more of an actual road than a washed out road like this. I guess I was expecting more. <laughs> so left, I don't wanna go. Right, I wanna go. And as anticipated, it's going upwards, climbing an elevation. I don't know for how long, how steep it's gonna get, so I need to basically Put the camera down, get the right gearing in the bike, right pedal assist mode, and hopefully climb that because I don't want to push the bike uphill, especially this bike, which weighs over 100 pounds. But that means we're getting really, really close to our target, which is somewhere on the left-hand side of this road. I also want to take a moment just to mention too that some of you may be wondering, why are you showing all this progress or time it's taken to get there? Because it's part of the journey. You know, I anyone could just go to the location and just film right there. But that takes all the fun out of it. I at least want to make you feel like you're here with me, whether you're you know, riding on the back of the bike, riding your bike with me, but you're seeing what's involved to get to these locations and to see that it is an actual journey and some of the things you have to come across like puddles and sometimes ticks, wildlife, remoteness. I share it with you because it's part of what I'm experiencing myself and I want you to experience it as well. Despite how it looks on camera, especially on wide angle, which doesn't do it justice, that is a really steep hill, really loose material, and it's difficult. I made it as far as here so far, lost some traction. I have to keep going, but right over here, I did see something in the woods. There's a beautiful orange butterfly. Got numerous ties here. I don't know why. And then we got some discarded items, including, of all things to find, a fishbowl for like a goldfish that you'd win at the state fair. I believe this is just discarded trash. There's plastic bottles, tin cans. 
At first I thought it was maybe a campsite or a homeless site. I think it is just a dumping site. But again, one of the many things you see when you do stuff like this. And the fish tank's serving its purpose. It's got some water in there. Probably some little tiny microbes as well. That was a little uh, detour. But now I have to keep climbing an elevation. I don't know where that goes, just another trail out here. And I'm hoping I can find another way out once I do reach my destination. Otherwise, I'm gonna have a slow trek on the way back. And I say trek, I'm on the bike, but it's slow going with all those puddles and hills. You know something else I just noticed? Power lines. We were along the power line pole, but these are more, looks like residential lines. They're going in the direction we're going. So I wonder if that is or was a residence. Hmm. Hopefully we'll get the answer to that. But there's definitely power lines going off of the main power line pole. So it's going somewhere. And also, looking down here, found the black diamond. Anthracite coal. It's all mixed in here. I wonder if this was an access road for a coal company back in the day. I do know, not with exact location, but I do know there are mines back here. Some vertical shafts that go straight down and some tunnels that I have heard about. And maybe sometime in the future we'll try to locate some of those, but we're definitely within the realm of coal country. So it would make sense that we do see coal, shale, old access roads, and I guess we'll find out sooner than later what these power lines go to. As I was coming on the access road, I noticed the pipe caught my attention. It's exposed. And I looked over, look what I found. This is either a culvert tunnel or a bridge. This I was not anticipating on finding. I wonder if there's like a, a rail line that went on top of here. I don't know of a train line that came back here, but it could have been maybe for a coal company. And look, we found a toy. Part of a little kid's cart. I think I need to get on top to confirm my suspicions that some type of rail line went on top of there. Otherwise, I don't know why this would be here. This is serving the purpose of like a culvert for water or a tunnel for people or equipment or vehicles. Heard a branch fall behind me. All right, let me climb up here and we'll see if we're correct. Well, now I'm even more confused. We're on top of it right now. This doesn't look like any type of rail bed. What could have this been for? I'm directly on top of it right now. It's right along the access road. It's too steep for a rail line to be here. The only way trains would be able to climb this was be on switchback. I thought maybe a mine company had lines, maybe pulling cars up on a hoist up an incline, but there's no evidence showing that. If you guys watching have any clue what you think this is more than beyond a bridge or tunnel or culvert, let me know because this one has me stumped. I'm usually pretty good at this kind of stuff. Regardless, it is part of the journey. It was along the way, I wanted to share it with you. And up until now, I had no idea this existed. And I'm even more perplexed now to its use. I don't know how old it is. It's not made out of complete stone, although there might be stone utilized. It's primarily concrete.
So I'm guessing it's built in the 1900s. It's definitely wide enough for a vehicle, but just doesn't make sense. Holy crap, is this kicking my ass. This is a, a wash basically, almost like a riverbed. It's so unstable and so steep. I'm pedaling and using the motor at the same time, barely making it going about three to five miles an hour. And every time I gain some traction or momentum, my tire keeps spinning out on a rock. But good news lies ahead. You see that? There's a structure up there. What I found on Google Maps is still here. I'm gonna catch my breath, get a drink of water, and then we'll get up there and explore around and see what that is, see if the pond is still there, and see if those items on the property are still there. From what I could tell, it's not a residence. It's not locked up. There is open doors, it's graffitied. So we should have no problem exploring that structure that I found on Google Maps. Whoa! What the heck did we find here? This looks like it could be a, a fun little exploration. I was not anticipating this. Good news and bad news. Bad news, this is a, a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Look at them flying around me. It's terrible. They're going in my ears, my mouth, my nose. I can't spend a whole lot of time here just because of this. The good news is there's a lot to see. We have this structure here, this structure here, another structure down here. A type of spillway but we're gonna do one at a time we're gonna start with this building first which does have the open door policy multiple open doors power lines do come here there is power that was connected to it at one time the meter is gone but the lines do continue but I'm not focused on that right now I want to get inside here and check it out I did snap a few photos which you will see in a photo montage and despite me not being a huge fan of graffiti, I have to say that some of this is actually really well done. You look at this. Looks like a, I don't know if that's a train of sorts. I thought maybe, no, it is a submarine. Yeah, and it's like waves or water. So whoever did this did a nice job. It's better than the typical stuff that we do see. But we got two doors here, one on the other end. I do have a flashlight as well. So let's uh, see what's here. I know someone's been here already because of uh, their taggings. What the hell is that? I think there's a beehive in here. I hear bees humming. All right, let's avoid that right now. Okay, <clears throat> this was a power room of sorts. There's concrete bases, electrical components. There's also a fire in here, it looks like too. There's plumbing, conduit. Polar fast response on that door right there with that box. There's a breaker box over there. I'm guessing there was equipment. Oh, that's a frog. Frog or toad hanging out in here. I'm guessing there was machinery or equipment on these bases. Just tons of trash in here now. So it is walled off. It's not completely open. There is a muffler or an exhaust pipe. There may have been a generator here. 
Possibly. That looks like a exhaust pipe. Two more doors on the back end here, or front end, depending on how you're looking at it. Modern construction, center block, concrete floor, modern components for electrical and plumbing. I'm guessing this had something to do with the little pond or reservoir that's here. <clears throat> just empty rooms now, but as you can see, just conduit, electrical boxes, everything's been stripped. Some rubber hoses coming out of the ground there inside of a PVC pipe going through the floor. I do want to check out that first room, but I also don't want to walk into a beehive of sorts. Here's the back of the building. Looks like a type of exhaust or vent right there with a cage around it. I'm going to try one more time. The mosquitoes are just not giving up. Relentless. Yeah, I hear humming and buzzing. I'm going to stick the camera up there and see if you could hear it. Hopefully you can hear that. Not worth going in. It's just empty rooms. All right, let's now focus on this structure, which is sitting at the foot of the pond here, or reservoir. There is a dam here. I don't know, don't know if this would be considered a reservoir. If it was, it wasn't very big. But makes you wonder what its use was. Oh, these mosquitoes. <sighs> Should have brought a bug net. I didn't know it was gonna be like this. This is just a, probably a huge breeding ground of mosquitoes and other types of insects. But the water is like chocolate milk, really cloudy and nasty. Won't be going in there, won't be sticking the camera in there. So now we're gonna walk on this I guess you could call it like a head wall. It's basically the dam levee. If you go that way, going in the water, going this way, got about a 10 foot drop. Neither of which I want to do. Oh, okay. So it's a hollowed out building. It did have a roof at one time. And it's open here. And I've seen this at other reservoirs where there would have been a pipe in here which allows the water to come in to lower the level. And there's actually the, the handle, the valve, which would be connected to the drain pipe down there somewhere beneath the surface. Turning that is like opening a valve on your sink or your faucet. And it's probably permanently open to keep the water level low. And it is coming out somewhere beneath us here. So when we get down there, we should get a better visual as to what's going on. Typically though, this is the spillway. This is where the water would have normally came over and it's wet, but not really flowing because as mentioned, it's coming out down there. This is probably when, if we get heavy rains, it would utilize that as an overflow. But this has not been used for its intended purposes in years, if not decades, just by the amount of natural decay and the way things are looking. But it's pretty neat to see. It's a really small version of what you'd see at a large reservoir. This is also what we came upon. If you remember my video from the number two reservoir, there was a, um, they took away the head wall while we're down the spillway, it took away the structure. So something like this would have been there. All that's there now is an open square in the ground that was filled with water. And that's where the water is draining out, similar to this through the pipe and over the spillway. And also another Google Maps find I did last year of a reservoir where it had, again, another structure like this, same concept, same design. So those videos I will link down below. The one I did last year is very similar to this, where the structure is still intact. The water 
watery pit still there. And it's just, this is on a smaller scale. So if you want to see that video in a comparison to this, which coincidentally enough, both of these are Google Maps finds. So I didn't anticipate it being a type of reservoir dam. There's also plenty of activity that beavers are living here. This tree is cut down by a beaver. I did see another one around here too that's partially being chopped down as we speak. Now when this was in full operation, a couple things we could observe here. Let me get down closer. But I didn't mention it before, the mosquitoes are bad here. Got to keep my mouth closed, they're flying in. So there's a normal water line, the darker area. So this is typically up maybe about another six to 10 inches. But when this was in operation as an active reservoir, the water would have been near the top of the spillway. So right here would be underwater. Almost certain of that. So it would have been filled up a bit more. Doesn't go back very far. From what I saw on Google Maps, it's primarily this. No clue how deep it is. Not sure if there's fish, snakes, squids. <laughs> I don't know what's in that water. I don't really want to find out. As much as I do love water, you honestly can't even see more than an inch in the water. That would be torture to go in there and not know what's in there. But we got more to explore. We need to get down bottom here and check out the next structure and see what the discharge area looks like beneath this valve house. This would probably be a better winter exploration. It would eliminate the bugs. This is the worst I've ever had with mosquitoes. It's like being on Naked and Afraid and getting eaten alive. So this is a more intact structure. It does have a roof. It is, it's like cinder block. Maybe cinder block, maybe just concrete. Some steel framing, a wooden door. And let me get the flashlight for this one. Door is normally locked. Has a wooden floor and it's the, not the true bottom. There's like a subfloor beneath this. And I don't really want to step on it because I don't want to fall through. Although I could see the bottom, it's about one to two feet below this floor. With nails and other items, I don't really want to risk that. It's actually relatively nice in here. It's got a particle board ceiling, some molding around it, barred windows, an inner wooden door right here. Uh, what to say, Bristol. And then we have some type of device here. And it looks like relatively newer modern equipment. There are two valves there, shut off valves, almost like resembles under a kitchen sink, hot and cold. I'm surprised to see the equipment looks as new or modern as it does, despite the conditions and the deterioration. It's kind of perplexing. It's like a mixture of things of newer and older. But that's all this is here. Sorry, got a mosquito in my mouth. And is that gas? I think that's for a gas line. So something was utilizing gas on the inside. So here's the little creek bed where the water typically flows out from, and that's cloudy and murky too, which is not surprising given where it's coming from. And we do have this here. This is a cinder block base covered in you know what. There is a door on it, a hatch, which I don't have any way to open it. Or 
can I get it open? No, I can't get my fingers on it. If I had a screwdriver or pry bar, I could probably get it. But what's more interesting is over here, there's actually a couple different things going on. There's a huge, what do you want to call that, uh, manhole cover? I mean, I'm size 13, and that's how big it is compared to my foot. The nuts on them are almost the size of like a baseball. Really large. Pipe sticking out there. Pipe going across there with a valve on it. And then up here, is where the water is seeping out. So what I was explaining before doesn't really match up with what we're seeing here. This is coming out just from not being maintained. Basically it's just deteriorated and formed its own way for the water to come through. So it's still coming through that valve house beneath the surface, but it's not coming out of a pipe. That pipe that we saw, or I was explaining, is most likely this pipe here. Probably comes underground here and connects to that building or that box here and goes in different directions. So what I was explaining is the general concept, but that's not what's happening here. This is just a makeshift spillway. The water typically would come over there as I explained earlier. That is the official spillway. And I was gonna walk over there, but I honestly don't even wanna get in this water. It's just that disgusting. But that is a concrete spillway. It's got like the chunks of stone in it, similar to this. And nature's slowly reclaiming it. I'm not even gonna try to guess what this was used for, whether it's for a mining company or for something else. I do know there are other official reservoirs on this mountain that we're on. I think they're still active. And they're probably within a mile or two of here. So I don't know if this was in conjunction with those. This was a whole separate entity. If this was a, a little operation that was happening here. Maybe it was for mining, washing coal. I truly don't know. If you guys happen to know, feel free to leave your suggestions down below. Even if we don't find out what it was used for, why it's here. Regardless, we did find it. And it's still here. One thing's for certain though, is that I am ready to get out of here. The bugs, you know my feelings and thoughts on that already. Horrible, horrible with the mosquitoes. But I am so happy this is here because this was probably the most difficult Google Maps find to date that I tried to get to, or had to get to. What I saw on Google Maps did not play out how it came in person. And although the bike made my trek, my journey, a heck of a lot quicker than it would have on foot. It was still difficult. Once I reached this uphill portion, I was really putting in the work to make the bike climb as much as I could. I had to push it one or two spots, but we made it, we succeeded, and there's signs of kind of hinting what, the, what took place here. Some type of water source and various structures and pipes and Pretty cool graffiti.
Anyways, guys, would love to hear your thoughts. I do want to thank you for coming along for this adventure, for this journey. And as I said before, I'll say it again, these Google Maps finds are a gamble. You never know if the item is still here and if it's going to be accessible and if we can even figure out what it is. But regardless, I am willing to put in the effort and to bring you along, whether it's a win or a fail, it is all part of the journey. So anyways, guys, I need to get out of here before I get eaten alive and get on to my next adventure. So thank you once again for watching. And more importantly, I'll see you in the next video.